I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm doing native script core development, I run into a certain problem with observables and setting the property names. Let me demonstrate this problem for you and how to fix it. Now, while I'll demonstrate this in a small Hello World app and in a bigger application, you will most certainly face this issue. I've created a new core native script app here. And this is just the Hello World template. Everybody's familiar with it by now. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. This presents you with a simple UI and on button tap, we just decrement this counter. And this counter is just displayed as a message string. Right here is a getter and a setter for a public property named message. And it's bound to the UI labels text property. So this is our view model and we inherit from observable, which means that when we update our message on button tap right here and set the message property, just like this, our setter needs to do two things. First, we need to update the value of the message, and then we need to notify that this property has changed. And this notification is responsible for updating our UI. Now, if I comment this out and live sync the app again, you'll see that tapping this button will no longer update our UI. So we do need this notification. Now, having the private backing field and a public property that exposes it is a long way to do it. That's the way the template is designed. And you can certainly do it that way, but there's a shorter way to do it. And that's just to have a public message property. And down here, instead of updating the message property, what you would do is just call the observables set method. So when you call the set method, you need to provide the property name and the new value that you want to use. This will give you the exact same results because the set method internally calls this notify property change. So far, so good. And everybody's probably familiar with this. So here's the problem that we have. We have a message property, and we're also trying to update it using this magic string. Sometime in the future, if we decide to refactor our code and change the property name to say message one, you're gonna end up with this mismatch between the property name and this magic string, which is the property name that you're trying to update. So you can definitely run into some runtime problems, which are gonna be very hard to troubleshoot later on. I'm gonna show you two methods that you can use to solve this problem. Since we're using TypeScript, we're gonna be able to strongly type this string, which will eliminate your problem altogether. Now recently, TypeScript introduced the key of operator, which basically allows us to get a type, which is a list of all the keys as strings, which are public properties on the class. Whoa, that's confusing. Let me show it to you so you can actually see it. It's easier that way. I'm gonna create a type called message type. Let's use the new key of operator and we'll specify the class, hello world model. So this message type becomes a list of all the public properties that are available and messages included in there as strings. And then we can also make ourselves a little constant here. Well, since this is a type, let's capitalize that and this one will not be capitalized. Constant message type is of type message type and this one will be message. So what did this accomplish? Well, now this string right here, this string message, it has to match one of the properties, one of the public properties in our class, which is this property right here. If it doesn't, you're gonna get a compile time error. So if I change it a little bit, you can see that we are all, we're getting an error immediately from TypeScript. So it has to equal message. And now we can take this constant and use it here in our set method. This way, you're always strongly typed and you never have to worry about mismatches of this type. Now, a shorter way to write this would be to just skip this whole line altogether and just have a one liner like this. Constant message type is key of hello world model equals message. And you still get the same ability right here. Now I'd like to show you method number two for doing this, which is using the same principles and we're using key of but with a slightly different approach. Instead of sprinkling these constants all over your classes, we're gonna have a separate file. We're gonna call it observable extensions. And I'm just gonna paste it in here. So what is this doing? Let's take a look at it. First of all, we need to import observable. And we have two functions that we are exporting here. Get observable property and set observable property. So what, what this does is it takes in an object of type T it's a generic function, and a key of type k. Now k, k extends type of t. So that means that k has to match 
any string that's public property in hello world model. Well, in this case, not hello world model, but any type T that we're gonna use that's an observable type. And then we use observables get method right here, which is not strongly typed to just get that key. And the set function works the same way, except we pass in a value in order to set it right here. So now in our view model, whenever we need to set the message type, actually I'm gonna go ahead and delete this stuff we did at the top here so you see that it's working anyway. And instead of this, we're gonna use that observable extension. So we're gonna set observable property. I'm gonna go ahead and call that method. We need to import it, of course. Let's go ahead and do the import. So set observable property. I'm gonna pass in this because this is the hello world view model. It extends observable. Then we need to pass in the key. So we want to update the message property and we wanna update the message property with this value right here. Okay, so, so you're probably thinking, Alex, why do we need to do all this extra work? We have an extra file, extra functions, extra constants and types. Well, take a look at this message. This is a string, but if you mistype this string, you're gonna get a TypeScript compilation error. See, this string must match exactly the public property that we're trying to update. So in the future, when your team goes and refactors this file and uh, changes the name of this public property to something like this, you're gonna get a compilation error immediately right here. And you're gonna need to update that. So those are the two methods that you can use to keep your property names in sync in NativeScript. Hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you. And if you're interested in NativeScript core, check out nativescripting.com. The NativeScript Pro course is coming very soon.